Another root event is God meeting Moses at the burning bush, which is described in uh, Exodus uh, chapter, chapter 3. Moses is out in the wilderness. He's a sheep herder. And here he sees this bush burning. It doesn't burn up, but there's fire in the bush. He goes over to the bush, and God speaks for, to him and addresses Moses. And Moses says, what is your name? And God says, I have come down to save my people, and my name is, is I am, meaning the one who cannot be named. I'm beyond naming. And uh, Moses is just simply astonished. And then God commissions Moses to go to Egypt and to lead out in delivering the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt. Moses says, it's too much for me. God says, I will go with you. He doesn't let him get off the hook. <laughs> he leads him forward into Egypt to encounter that uh, system of slavery which was holding sway in Egypt. That burning bush event is a watershed in the history of religions. For here, God, the creator of the universe, comes down to save people from, from uh, enslavement. And he meets Moses in personal encounter, I, thou, encounter. That's the nature of biblical faith, the nature of the biblical God, the one who comes down to meet us, to encounter us. And why does he come down? That he may save us. And so fast forward now, we go to the Egypt experience itself. And here, Moses with his brother Aaron are called by God to confront Pharaoh with all of his military power and might, commanding him, let my people go. And the drama unfolds in dramatic event after dramatic event. Twelve plagues come upon the Egyptians. And finally Pharaoh releases them. And they leave and cross the Red Sea and get away from that imprisonment. That event, that root event, Israel has never forgotten. Um, and year by year at the Feast of uh, Passover, they commemorate that event of leaving Egypt, freed from that enslavement. And this event not only freed Israel then, but to this very day, over and over again, among oppressed people, the story of God delivering Israel from enslavement to Pharaoh, uh, gives people encouragement in situations of oppression, of oppression and injustice. Um, wherever you go around the world. Uh, we talked yesterday about Mahatma Gandhi and how he was so inspired by ahimsa and that sort of thing to work at, uh, nonviolently at bringing about freedom uh, to the, uh, to the uh, Indian people who were under British imperial rule. That's very true. Gandhi was very informed by those various streams. But far more significant than Gandhi is this account here in the Bible, where God comes down and redeems his people from enslavement to Pharaoh and delivers them from it all. And around the world, as I say, oppressed people get encouragement by this event. They get encouragement by this phenomenal event of God intervening in this way to bring freedom from oppression. And then we go on to the next root event, God meeting, uh, God, uh, meeting Israel at Mount Sinai and, de and revealing the Ten Commandments to them. God leads them to Mount Sinai. Uh, it's a whole, the biblical scriptures have just chapter after chapter about the event there, the smoke on the mountain, the voice of God from the mountain, the Ten Commandments given on the mountain. What's God up to? What's he doing? He is trying to get into Israel's head that there is only one creator God and that they should worship only this one creator God. And this creator God is for their well-being he wants to lead them forward through adversity after adversity, giving them victory and, uh, and uh, blessing and shalom and peace. All of that God is promising to Israel as he meets them there on Mount Sinai. That event, uh, again, powerfully formed Israel. And to this day, powerfully forms all the people of God who are, uh, who are uh, uh, seeking to walk in the way of God the Mount Sinai event. Very interestingly, in this uh, leaving from Egypt and the Mount Sinai event, uh, it's very clear that this movement is to be an open movement, welcoming peoples, whoever wants to join the movement. It's not an emphasis on a genealogical connection with Abraham and with his people. It is a connection with God and his people. That, uh, that, 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 uh, that they are to emphasize. 
And so it is a open movement uh, with uh, people invited from other tribes and nations in the region and beyond to join in this movement of deliverance and of uh, receiving the commands of God at Mount Sinai. It is a, uh, a welcoming movement. And, and the, this, this new people are, are a people who are formed by covenant, not by who they're related to and who they descended from and so forth. <clears throat> Another root event, very significant, is God's promise to David in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse, six, verse, uh, verse uh, 16. Uh, David uh, is hoping to build a temple for God. He's the king of Israel now and uh, planning to build this temple for God. And uh, then uh, the prophet Nathan comes to David. He says, actually, God has determined that you will not build a temple for God. You have too much blood on your hands. Um, and God is a God of God. God, uh, uh, he, will, he will raise up your son who will be a man of peace and he can build the temple but you won't build the temple. But David, I'm going to do something for you as a promise. I'm promising it. A son born to you, a son through you, is going to uh, be the eternal king. The eternal king. He'll rule forever. David is just overwhelmed. He goes and sits at the tabernacle nearby there and just sits there before the Lord and just says, Lord, how can this be? How can this be? But I accept this promise. I accept this promise. That's a very neat little narrative. It just tucked right there in the Bible. You hardly even notice it. But there it is, this promise of God to David that a son born through him is going to be the eternal king. And the thing about that root event, small and seemingly insignificant as it is, the thing about that root event is that as the centuries rolled on, the prophets kept holding this promise up and expanding on it and emphasizing it and giving people encouragement by that. A savior will come. A savior will come. He'll be from David's line. In fact, he'll even be from his town of Bethlehem. A, sa a son of David will be raised up. Don't be discouraged. A savior will come. He will be the Messiah. He'll be the eternal king. He'll reign forever. You know, you read Ezekiel and you read Isaiah and the prophets and on and Jeremiah and on and on. The prophet after prophet keeps renewing this promise. It's just amazing. And then finally one day, why uh, the Savior arrives. And that's our next root event, the coming of the Savior. Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, and the angel Gabriel coming to the Virgin Mary and announcing, he'll be born to you. <laughs> the Savior's going to be born to you. Mary is just simply overwhelmed. Mary is just so overcome, she sings this song. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds. With his arm, he has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down the rulers from their thrones, and he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, and he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors long ago. <laughs> the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham and to the prophets down through the centuries. And so Mary is just simply amazed and overwhelmed by this, uh, tremendous, this tremendous promise of God. So these root events keep happening. And uh, at our next session, we're going to look now at the, uh, at, um, at the ministry of, uh, of Jesus himself uh, and what all of that means in terms of a definitive root event which has formed the Christian movement. Um, it's interesting that Mary's song goes right back to Abraham, that uh, original promise of God, that as Abraham follows God, all nations will be blessed by him. And now that one through whom this blessing to all nations uh, will, uh, uh, will be has, has actually come. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.